eyes of the enemy are constantly watching us. From the ground, from the air, with every possible means of reconnaissance, they are searching out our position to destroy us if they can. A gun seen usually means a gun lost. But if a position is effectively concealed, there's a good chance of escaping detection and turning the tables on the enemy. Camouflage is the concealment of troops and equipment from enemy observation. Successfully applied, it makes the best use of the protection offered by nature. Where this is not enough, it makes use of man's ingenuity to simulate nature. The concealment of any unit must be designed to defeat the type of observation most dangerous to that unit. Frontline troops are particularly vulnerable to ground observation. Ground observation, however, is the simplest form to guard against, for it is the one with which we are most familiar. To protect ourselves against visual observation from the air, we must know just how much the observer can or cannot see. Among the things that will be noticed first, are unnatural tones or shapes, unusual shadows, regular patterns of objects, and reflections. An aerial observer will notice pronounced changes in familiar terrain, such as this newly made landing field. But he is unable to make fine distinctions. At very high altitudes, atmospheric haze interferes with clear vision. At low altitudes, the speed of the plane prevents detailed observation. The interpreter of aerial photographs, however, is hampered by fewer limitations than the visual observer. He can take his time examining the terrain, and modern photographic techniques enable him to detect fine details and indistinct objects. Regular shaped forms are always easy to spot. Changes in the appearance of a stretch of ground can be picked up very quickly by comparing photographs of different dates. For instance, the addition of new roads in the later photograph and the slashings in the trees give invaluable information. Troops within artillery range of the enemy must be particularly careful even if their positions are constantly changing. In choosing a position, access roads should be a primary consideration. The enemy will always suspect an installation when a road terminates abruptly at a dead end. And also places in a road where marks of heavy traffic suddenly stop like arrows pointing to our position. Vehicles should never turn around at the installation and retrace their route because dirt and gravel roads appear lighter when heavily traveled than when unused. Traffic should be routed past the installation. Maximum use should be made of existing roads which join others. Sometimes effective dummies can be made simply by making cracks into another patch of woods. Short exposed tracks at the real position can be concealed if necessary.
If it is impossible to use existing roads, then new roads should be continued to false but logical objectives or made to look like shortcuts or detours. We now begin to understand the importance of choice of a position in concealment. Maximum use must be made of existing natural concealment without interfering with the mission of the unit. Terrain such as this offers excellent natural concealment. Here it is necessary only to place equipment irregularly so that the outline and shadows are broken up by existing foliage and shadows. Both the overhead and oblique views must be considered. The position chosen, the next step is to control the occupation so that the fewest apparent changes will be made in the area. Marking tapes prevent parking of vehicles in exposed places and confine foot traffic to covered paths. Exposed tracks are inconspicuous from the ground but are very noticeable from the air. Equipment must be under cover. Personnel must not look up at planes. Warning signs are used to convey special instructions, and guards are posted to enforce these concealment measures. When existing foliage is not dense enough, natural materials which blend with the terrain are used to conceal men and equipment. When the trees are bare, they may still be used for concealment. In that case, we rely on the network of intricate shadows cast by the branches to prevent detection. Additional bare branches may be placed on the sunny side of the object to break up its form, and on the shady side to make its shadow more irregular. Less favorable terrain like this must be supplemented by careful use of natural materials to destroy telltale outlines and shadows. The position then becomes inconspicuous against the surroundings. In this type of country, artificial materials can conceal the equipment by breaking up its line and shadow. It now resembles a few unobtrusive clumps of bushes matching the surroundings. In an area of such uniform appearance as this, it is virtually impossible to conceal anything. The choice of such a position should be avoided. Garnished fishnets are usually draped over vehicles and small weapons when they are not in use. When equipment such as field artillery is operated under camouflage, then the fishnets are put up as flat tops. Individual ingenuity will suggest the use of novel and effective means to employ whatever materials are at hand. When natural materials are lacking entirely, or it is impractical to use them, artificial materials are utilized. Concealment cannot be obtained by the numbers. When properly applied, camouflage will not only minimize our losses, but will make it easier for our combined forces to attack effectively. We know that our observation planes can photograph an enemy installation and drop the picture to our batteries within 10 minutes. The enemy is striving to do the same, but proper camouflage will stop him. Don't ever forget the importance of concealment.